Hi, my name is Christina. Welcome back to the Reclaimed Heirloom. Today I want to show you how I'm going to create a floating marble using any Salon chalk paint. And I am going to use my little clever meshing tool and I'm going to fill you in on all the colors and supplies that I use for this tutorial. So let's get started. Chalk paint is very thick. I generally apply my first coat fairly thin. It's important to add water when working with chalk paint. This will always help you get your paint into corners and details really well and easy. When I work with chalk paint, I always moisten my brush. As you'll notice, I'm getting the first coat on the rim of the tabletop, but that's okay. I'm gonna show you exactly what I do to correct this. When working with uh, undercoat of a dark varnish or wood, you would normally need approximately two coats. So for your first coat of chalk paint, never worry too much about your brush strokes. You just want to apply it so you have a good coverage and a complete coverage. For this faux marble technique, I want to use a tool called a meshing tool and this is used to blend chalk paint so much easier and as we continue in the tutorial we're going to get into exactly how to use this. So I'm gonna go and let this dry so just base coat we've got two coats of the French linen on the bottom one coat of the graphite black on the top. So I'm gonna let this dry and now we're gonna go ahead and start mashing. So let's see how the marble turns out. As you can see, I corrected the table rim, which had French linen uh, applied onto it. And because now I'm applying graphite, that corrects it, and I'm adding my second coat of graphite. For the top of this, we have what is called a graphite, and this is Annie Salone's palettes, color palettes, excuse me. And graphite is actually kind of a dark, dark gray black. It's not a full true black. And she recently came out with on her color palette an Athenian black. And Athenian is a really, really rich black. But we have the French linen base, which is a taupey color. And then for my marble veins, and I'll explain as we go what that will be, is I'm going to actually use uh, this country gray. And it does have a gray hue, it's like a cream, it's very muted. But I wanted to show you in close-up detail, 
I kind of recommend an artist brush that is like that. You can see that. I think you can. It's very pointed, okay? Because what we want to do to create these veins is drag it. So let's get going and let's see how this meshing is going to turn out. You can use any paint brushes you currently have. I'm just showing you here what I used. The first step I'm going to do is by adding clear glaze and you can use extender if you want more time to work with your clear glaze. You do not have to use this step or use clear glaze, it's a total option. If you don't use clear glaze, you will need to use more steady flow of mist water. The clear glaze that I'm using here is by General Finishes. I am applying the Athenian Black and Graphite in a wave-like fashion to mimic the black marble. For inspiration, you can Google black marble for more images. With my meshing applicator, I started by adding a thin coat of paint so it's not bone dry. Meshing is simply mashing your colors. The physics of meshing is the applicator is picking up the paint and smashing it down repetitively. So again, it's picking up, putting down, picking up, putting down. Because the synthetic pad is thick and fluffy, it is actually blending for you. It is important to offload paint from your meshing applicator. You can use old rags or shop towels and remove excess paint as the meshing applicator will get a little bit saturated as you continue to mesh. Using my artist brush I showed you earlier, I dip my brush into the country gray and with no particular order I am now going to create some marble veins. As we continue you will see that these veins are going to be meshed in with the meshing applicator. This is what I call deep veins. Again, always remember to offload your excess paint. Now, I am going to mesh my deep veins into the marble base. This creates a light, slightly smoky effect, but as we continue, you will see why. So now I want to create more superficial veins, closer to the surface of the marble. For this step, I am going to use a dry brush. You can use any clean dry brush for this step. With the dry brush, you are going to sweep very lightly back and forth, side to side motion. So remember, keep a light touch with your vein sweeps. For any reason you want to add a, a few more veins or change some of the directions, add more, 
This is the truly fun part of decorative finishes. Don't fear it, have fun with this. There are no two marbles alike. As you'll notice, just like the meshing applicator, with the uh, dry brush I'm using, I had a dry shop towel just to offload the pa uh, paint as I'm going around and sweeping. reason you don't like something, you can easily reapply some of your clear glaze and your paint, mesh over it again, and try again. Practice, play, it's truly very simple and a lot of fun. As I'm completing, I wanted to get my superficial veins to intersect a bit more. Again, play with it, build, have some fun. It may be useful to print off an image of some black marble as a visual reference so you can have it close by. First time ever doing a black marble, and I'm quite happy with it. And I found with the mesher, it really made things go by very quickly, which was great. Um, yeah, this whole table so far has taken me not even an hour. So yeah, give it a go, give it a try. I'm gonna go ahead and clear wax this because no glaze is ever a sealer. It's just a decorative medium. So I need to clear wax this. Then all I'm gonna do is add just at the very ledges and some of this detail corner is a little bit of the dark wax. I'm not gonna use black, I think I'm gonna use dark and just wipe it back a bit just to highlight those with some darker definition and then I'm gonna go and stage it. So again, stay to the ends, check out some of these amazing projects you guys have done. God, they're gorgeous. You guys keep this up, my stuff's gonna look pretty damn boring. <laughs> again, don't forget to email me some of your projects as I'd love to see what you're learning and what you're creating. It really makes my day. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and any comments you may have or questions, you can leave those in the comments below, as well as don't forget to subscribe. I've got some other really cool ideas I wanna share with you, so lots of really fun tutorials coming soon. So hit the subscribe button.